Hey there. In the last 30 days, who has more COVID cases? Third world country, Mexico, or Florida? That's right, kids. Florida. Hey there. In the last 30 days, who has more COVID cases? Third world country, Mexico, or Florida? That's right, kids. Florida. Hey there. In the last 30 days, who has more? Hello. <laughs> I have not streamed Medieval Dynasty for a little while. Um, first off, I was out of town for a while and um, sick for a while. I had a head summer cold. I had a lot of stuff going on too. So I was, wasn't even on ESO as much as I normally would like to be, which is the um, one that the game that I have been playing the longest and like the most but this one has me hooked um, and I'm here to tell you about the things that I would do differently in fact I'm doing a lot of changes because of what I have done 
in the uh, previous part of the game. Um, right now, it's dark out. Oh, I have no torch in the slot. That's the other thing. I always have to keep a torch. Let's go with this one. Equipped. Which, by the way, um, is very important if you're just starting the game and it's winter and you don't have the warm clothes. Um, one of the first tips is to carry a torch with you. It, that way you won't die by freezing. That may, that's how I made it through the first winter. Okay, my wife, a lot has happened since the last time I've been on. I have a wife and a child, and I'm going to go to sleep right now so we can start a new day because streaming at night doesn't work too well. <laughs> it's hard to see what's going on. So we're gonna start a new day. Okay, so now, as you can see from the top, it's green, it is spring, and if you go to the map, it will tell you that. This is beginner stuff. If you have questions, please put them in chat if you're watching, because we can go over this and I can answer questions for you. Um, right now it's spring, it's day two of spring, and spring is pretty important. Most of your crops are to be planted in the spring, and your taxes are due in the first part of spring. And that is very important. If you don't pay, you start getting penalties and all kinds of stuff. And so you can see, I just paid my taxes. As each quarter, each season goes by, your taxes will go up so that you'll know how much at the end of the fourth season, how much you're gonna have to pay in spring. Now, I currently, one of the things that I think I might change. I'm going to possibly do this again. Uh, start from the beginning. I'm not sure yet. But one of the things I might do is change to a four-day season. I only have a three-day season. And it really doesn't give you much time to finish quests, which, by the way, quests are pretty important. Um, you need to um, get skill points and quests will give you dynasty points. Sure. There's three different things we're working with here. Um, there are dynasty reputation, and you get certain things once you hit certain reputation. Um, like, I believe it was 14 or 15,000 reputation, and the building, the number of buildings, and build a barn um, went up to like 40, or maybe it was 55, I can't remember right now, but you get a huge jump in the number of buildings you just can't build. Um, and the other things might, and, and when you are doing the quests, there are different types of quests. Your journal shows you your quests and you have story quests, which are ones that are there all the time. They do not expire. Side quests, however, and challenges expire at the end of each season. So if you take a quest from an individual person, um, which are, let's say right here in town, I, these little asterisks in yellow are quests that are the shorter, not story quests. And when you take one of those quests, it, um, hold on just a second. Okay. When you take one of those quests, it's good to take it at the beginning of the season. Don't take it like on day, the end of day two or day three, because some of them will keep you out of town for a good day at least. And you out of your village and there is a lot you have to do um and then you have unless you have your village running smoothly where you don't run out of anything where you're you have fertilizer and seed and every because that's the ultimate goal here is to get everything working together where you're not doing much just reaping in the money well i'm not there yet so it's kind of important to you know do those quests early in the season. That way you can get it done and still have time to do what else you need to do in the season, and especially in spring. Um, let's just get out there and I'll start talking about this stuff. Go out. Um, and you, beginning of the day, there's the wife. And it changed with the update. When you talk to her, um, first of all, taking a closer look at her is just her stats. 
and what her mood is and where she's working and where she lives and where she's working and, and she has a child, we have a child, that sort of thing. Um, the other things that are basically new is having, when you have a favor to ask, this one, and I used this one this time because I had stuff going on. I could not go to town to pay taxes. And I'm thinking of, I'm in the process, I should say, of moving my village to a different area. And I'm going to be further away from the main town where you pay your taxes. So I give it to her to do at the beginning of spring. And she goes and does that. Hopefully she doesn't have a, a very important job where she, like she's the only lumberjack which she isn't, thank goodness, um, because something that you absolutely depend on her to do because she will be away from her work for a while. Um, we have a debt to pay. Would you like this? Would you take this money to the Castilian? We don't have a debt at this point in time, and that's fairly new, so that's interesting. She can do that. And then could you inform the Herald that we fulfilled the king's request? Now, that is something I have not done yet. Apparently, there are quests for the Herald, which is like for the king. And my husband was playing this game ahead of me, and I'm not ready to do that yet. It, they are very difficult, and he almost went broke trying to complete the quest. So I don't know. If you want to try it, try it, and then maybe save just before you try it and then go back. I just haven't done that yet. So that's, that's the third thing that she, she can do is turn those in for you. Um, ask her how the kingdom's doing. We seem to run trouble free so far. Now that's good. Usually I have, oh, there's buildings. When you wake up in the morning, there's buildings damaged. You need to do this. You need to do that. So this is new romance. Um, I think her affection's going down because I accidentally told her the last time I was on that I got her a little something because they have a special, um, person that sells perfume and jewelry and that kind of stuff now that you can give to your wife. And I accidentally bought a necklace, I think it was. I can't remember. It was huge. It was like 1,400 coins. And I am not. So I sold it back because I didn't want to spend that much money. And I only got half back. But anyway, and I forgot that I sold it back. So I told her I got her a little something. And then I said, actually, never mind, because I didn't have anything to give to her. And we aren't at a, our relationship isn't going too well here. It's at 87%. <laughs> so anyway, uh, and then most anybody that you talk to in town, at least can tell, answer the question, where can you find? This is big because, excuse me, when you're out, I mean, the map, so I can show you. What did I do? Oh, jeepers. Somehow I got a new building unlocked, a stable. Oh, that means I can get burrows and horses. Yes. Been waiting for that because they can carry for you. Um, what I was going to show you is that you are really spread out. This is where you pay your taxes, but these are the other towns here. And um, as far as See, I lost my train of thought. What was I gonna, what was I talking about with her? Where did that ding dong wife go? Let's see this, we can see her here. The wife is pink, so she's right there. She's probably hanging out with all her cronies at the, no, there she is, there she is. Oh, she changed her clothes, she's going to work. Um, oh, this part, where can I find? As you can see, the towns are all over the place and they take a while to get there and you'll run into wild animals and stuff that can kill you. You know, the animals can kill you if you don't aren't proficient in fighting, that sort of thing. Um, but there are times when you need certain things, like vendors. You're on a quest and you need to buy something from somebody, a, a bag that somebody makes. Well, you don't have every single type of um, merchant in every town. They may have one, sometimes two, three, like the main town does, but a lot of times you don't. So say you have a seamster that you need to go to to buy a water skin or something like that, and she's far away, or they say, like she'll tell us here, where is a seamster? Den Denica and Hornica. So 
it helps tremendously to know where they are instead of running around aimlessly. Same thing with animals. Um, I may be buying a donkey soon. This is cool. So a donkey uh, is in Tutki. I do not know where Tutki is. I don't think I've ever been there. Oh, yes, I have. It's way up here. So they have donkeys. And that's where you would go for your, your donkeys. And I know that here they have chickens. I think it's this one that has the pigs. Maybe it's this one. I don't know. Anyway, you, there, you have to find out where they are. Let's go talk to her again because I want to go over this a little bit more. So those are the two things. Vendors and farm animals. So farm animals where you can buy them. Vendors are who you can sell stuff to. And if you get to the point where I am now, where I'm really reaping in the flax and I've got a lot to sell, I can bankrupt a town very easily. But like the main town has three vendors and I think I've bankrupted all three vendors and then I've had to go to other towns to um, sell the rest of my stuff. So special, what's special? Oh, exotic goods. That's the one that gives the gifts for your whoever. Uh, rethinking your oh, rethinking your talents. That was there before. You can go in and re-spec your points, that kind of thing. Um, and of course, every NPC that you run into, you ask them to move a little. I have one in my pigsty, I'm not the pigsty, in the chicken coop, where she stands in the doorway all the time and I cannot get in there. So, see, and then they move for you. Although she doesn't move, I get very frustrated with her. Oh, she's not in the doorway. But the thing is, my chickens, oh, I got two little chicks now. Oh, a male and a female. Cool, I mean a female and a female, very good. And their trough is full. They've got 100% food. Anyway, and I've got people making animal feed now. I used to have to go buy it before I had people making it. I love the sounds of all the animals, but these guys don't go out. My husband's, my husband's chickens are all over the place. The roosters are all running around. I had one rooster that ran around for a little while. But let's see, when this rooster grows up, I'll probably sell one of the other roosters. You have the ability, management, let's go to, and this is with all the animals. You can go to the chickens. It tells you what you have, how many you have, and how old they are. And I usually keep two roosters. If I end up with three or more, I'll end up selling one, and you can sell them um, by going into management. Let's go into animal husbandry. Hen house up here. And that's the one thing this, this game is really tough to figure out is where everything is um, in navigating the screens. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Anyway, um, so when this, when this, here's a chick, this is a male chicken blue here. When he gets to be the full grown rooster, I will probably sell off this guy and money comes in. I don't even know how much I got for the last one, but they do sell and off they go. My animal breeder here, Dagmara, she is not very happy with going down, but it is what it is. I have to have somebody that does that. The guy, my pigs, I've got two little piglets. I had one, now I've got two. Um, and this guy, he loves being an animal breeder. He's a five, his skill is a five, and it's going up, and he's a happy camper, which is really cool. Um, also, when looking here, you can see there, my main focus is the manure is, it needs to be, needs to be needed. And I have because it's needed for fertilizer. And my barn workers in the barn, they produce the manure, or the fertilizer by using manure and straw. It gets very complicated and it's hard to remember all this stuff. <laughs> but it's really cool. Okay, now I've got 
a problem here somewhere. I gotta look and see what it is. This symbol means I'm out of resources. And I have had her making linen threads, so she's run out of flax stock. Oh, no, no, no. Linen shirt. Take this out. See, I've got her at 75%. I'm going to take her down. And that's the item, the linen shirts, is what I ultimately want. It's a guy, actually. want him making our linen shirts because I can sell them for quite a bit of money. Okay, linen thread, I have flax. Linen shirt, I need linen fabric. So I should probably have her making linen fabric. Let me see if we have, yes, we have linen thread. Okay, I'm gonna take her down here and we're gonna start making some linen fabric. So put this up to 100%. And you can switch out what she makes. Some of these items are locked because I just haven't gotten that far yet because the way you unlock them is by purchasing patterns to be able to do it or schemes as they call them. So this, let's get out of this menu. And when I go back in, management, building, C, it's gone. We took care of the problem, so the notification is gone. Now, let me do a couple of things here. Let's take a look at my fields. And this is something, the reason I'm moving my village, this layout that I have put together isn't working. It's a mess. I've got a couple houses on the other side of town. I've started putting houses together over here more, but I also have a food storage here and my barn. See, there's another house and here's the barn and there's no rhyme or reason as to where things are put. And I've got this lumberjack thing here, which was just thrown in, which by the way, don't build in the dark. <laughs> You can't see how you're laying things out. And uh, that's exactly what happened to me here. I have things that are cattywampus and, oh, there's one of my pigs. And just kind of not working well. I check the troughs to make sure we don't have any problem there. Oh, this, oh, look, there's, oh, there's one of the little ones. Aw, that's a little girl. I saw the male before. I didn't know I had a little girl. This is daddy over here. The big old brute. And then uh, this guy just stands here. He is, this is my excavation shed, which is pretty cool. Um, would be under extraction. Excavation shed. And, um... What he does for me is right now he's collecting stones and limestone. And when I need daub, I have him producing clay. I don't have a workshop yet that clay can be used in, so it's not absolutely necessary right now. So I'm just having him do these two things. And stones, I can't express enough how much you need stones. <laughs> it's crazy, sticks and stones. And I was picking up sticks and stones on my own and it got to be crazy. And now I have people collecting mushrooms for me and sticks and stones and it's all working pretty good. This is another lumber mill that I threw up um, just because I needed another guy and I'm gonna take those down and I'll show you where I'm gonna put a new one that holds more people. My blacksmith another food storage place and all this is is it holds food um, and it should be that you would think you would think that the woman that's cooking in the tavern could take food from here but that doesn't seem to be working quite well enough so sometimes I will haul like all this meat we have a ton of meat um, I'm going to take the kitchen.
here I'd said I'm going to take the eggs and I'm going to put them in the tavern crate and the onions. Uh, maybe the mushrooms. Oh, the eggs. One egg. And then hopefully she's still cooking meat. Let's go over to the tavern. Tavern's kind of cool. I like this tavern. I like the way it's open. And you cook things here. Like you, I can cook meat if she's way behind in doing stuff. Look at this. Look at her. She's standing there. Um, I'm gonna look at what she's actually working on. So I'm gonna put all the carrots in here. I'm gonna transfer. Oh, you can transfer the stack too. Transfer everything over. Transfer all the mushrooms. Transfer the onions. And out of a hundred kilograms, we have forty-two thirty-five. And she's. Oh, I'm going to take some roasted fish meat for myself because it's better nutrition than um, the roasted meat. It gives you lasts a little bit longer. And my roasted meat's running out. I'm going to take a little bit more of the fish. Because I don't know if I'm going to be running around or not today. Um, as I've explained in the past, lower left corner, that circle, the green is your stamina, the red is your health. And if you're running, the green will go down pretty fast, fast or swimming fast. If you, In other words, if you put your shift key down, that will go down. The orange is food and the blue is water. So what I'm going to do is go in here and I'll eat this since there's only one. You can see this will go, the orange line here goes up. I'm going to take it all the way up because it usually lasts me all day if I fill up in the morning. I always carry a little extra with me just in case. So we shall see. And Okay, um, let's go down and get some water first. The way you replenish your water is by drinking, let's see, there's my, the person that fishes for me. Out there fishing. And the fishing hut. And there's my house, of course, and my, I'm sure my little boy is still standing. Oh, he's moved. Where did he go? That's the other thing that happens with the kids now. They start to wander as they get a little older. <laughs> and you wonder, where'd they go? Um, this is a storage shed. Your basic stuff goes into storage shed, and they will pull from the storage shed. Your workers will pull from the storage shed their food to eat, um, and any tools that are needed for their job. So you have to say you've got a farmer that uses a hoe and a bag and the scythe, these, uh, this, this, and a hoe because it's spring. You have to make sure that there's enough in here for him. Now, you don't have to make them yourself as long as you have a seamstress and a smithy. The smithy will make the stone hoe the um, bronze scythe if you want that and the and a stone knife or a fishing spear for the person that's doing the fishing but the bag is made by the seamstress and you learn all this and there's different items that are needed so it all has to come together and work smoothly <laughs> the thing that i had problems with and this i'll explain to you now let's go back in here is having enough lumbermen lumberjacks to keep the uh, logs high enough, logs coming in for firewood. And firewood is very, very important. Here we go. Now I've got plenty because I have gone and set up in my buildings. I have three wood sheds, which I'm going to change. I'm going to take down. I'm, I'm, I may have already started it. I should go look put up a more sturdy woodshed um, in my new area and then uh, take down a couple of these because they only take one person and that's an awful lot of buildings for just three people. And they're, you're taxed at 10 
coins each per season, maybe? Hey, you know what? That's a question. I don't know. I don't know if it's per season. Your ta I think it is. I'm almost certain it is. I have to look that one up, though. Um, whereas it would be like, say, for uh, Woodshed 2. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. View. Buildings. Extraction. Okay. This is, I have three of these. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, the very bottom down here, you see it says one person. Now, if you build, you can put two people in uh, a woodshed number two. So I'm going to put, maybe because I'm getting more people, I, maybe I should put two up, but I'm gonna put one up for now and leave the, take down two at uh, the old village and leave one up at the old village. I have to do this kind of slowly. Here's where you wanna get to is mining, getting a mine. So I have this type of wood shed and I have the extraction shed. The mining I'll show you later. Um, so let's go in here. I'm gonna see if there's anything that I can take to town to sell. I currently have 10,000 coins, a little over 10,000, 10,100. I had as high as 15,000. And I'll show you what I bought. Okay, oh, look here. I've got 12 linen shirts at two. Well, it says 240 here, but when you go to the vendor, it's, it's probably less than that. It's probably about half. So I'm going to take those. And where did I get my, where did I get my coins, coins? I know the things that are not needed, like feathers. I'm not using feathers yet for anything. So I will take feathers and fur. I know that down the road I'm going to be using it, but we'll see. Okay, she's still making linen fabric thread. I have plenty of manure to make fertilizer. Planks. Oh, wow, we've got 200 planks, but I know I'm going to be building sturdier homes that take planks, so I'll want that to build up. Salt sticks, stones, straw, tin, wooden bowls. You need wooden bowls for the um, person in the tavern to make recipes. One of the items needed to make something is a wooden bowl. So I have somebody making wooden bowls in the workshop. Sometimes if I end up with a lot of them, I will take them to town and sell them, but they're not worth that much, really. Um... Let's just take a quick peek around the other places and then I'll go to town and show you. We have in management, your crops are the most important thing. I And flax is really important. Um, and you can sell flax seeds. I have 10 fields now. The first six, are right here at the village. I'll show you how bad they are. <laughs> and then I'll show you my pride and joy that's out here are these fields. They're all flax fields and I'd like to change them around a little bit and get rid of these. But anyway, that's a whole nother thing. But you can see there is seeding going on. We're in spring. This has been fertilized and there's a guy out there putting down the seed. And I've got two barns. barns, barns. Where are my barns? Farming. I have two barns. I have a barn one that's in the old village here. You can take up to four people here. And these two, one is a farmer and one is a barn worker. The barn worker actually is pretty important because in this one, I have them making rye grain and fertilizer. The other, and the other thing that you really need is animal field, field feed for your chickens and your pigs. And it gets very expensive to go to town and purchase them. So as soon as you can get somebody to make them, make them. You can make fertilizer from spoiled food um, or with manure. I have not, do not have food spoilage on this game. I'm going to try it next time. I'm going to put it in there and see if it works better to use spoiled food 
or if it's a real hassle keeping people fed. I'm not sure. That's going to be a challenge in the next time I play or a new game that I set up. Um, so anyway, this is all the stuff that the, the farmer and the barn worker can do. If you are at a time of the year where the farmer is just standing around doing nothing because he's not plowing, he's not fertilizing, he's not seeding, because it's usually spring. And then when the harvests come in, um, make him a barn worker, remove him from the barn and then add him back in as a barn worker. And then you can have them both working as barn workers to do several of those items. Because when you, <laughs> when you harvest the flax, you need to thrash the flax once it comes in and a barn worker can do that to end up with flax seed and straw. So, and the flax seed, about half of what comes in, I sell. And that's my main income comes from flax seed at this point in time. And I was getting a little panicked here, getting everything planted, but they're doing well. They're doing this on their own, which is great. Um, sometimes if it doesn't seem like things are going the way you need them to go, you can jump in and anything that your workers do, you can do. Like if you've run out of firewood, I've done that a lot. If you run out of firewood, you go in and you grab some logs or cut down logs if you don't have enough logs and make your firewood and get it in that box for your, because you don't want them freezing to death. If winter, they use a lot of firewood. And then if for some reason you're wondering, how come my sticks are disappearing? I thought I had 500 sticks in the storage. They start burning sticks if they don't have any firewood. So be, you, it, you just have to keep this all going. It's, it's, I have gotten very frustrated at this at times because I don't have a lot of patience. And if something goes wrong, I get real upset if it's not going just right. So I'm getting better at that though, because I'm getting to understand how this works a little better. Um, let's see what else. Oh, there's one of my guys, Otmar. Oh, he's a lumberjack. He's going to go and cut down a tree probably. By the way, when you cut down a tree, a stump will be left. And you can either take a shovel and take that stump out or leave the stump and that tree will grow back. Now, when your workers cut down a tree, it doesn't go down. It just stays there. So you really don't want to be taking the see. He just added logs to the chest, but no tree gone. So it kind of works out better if you have them doing it instead of you. Although there are times when land needs to be cleared. I had to clear a whole bunch to get some of these buildings in and I did it myself and I took out the stumps and that's what I did. Um, here are, what is she doing here? Let me take a closer look at her. She has an eight-year-old child. She is a blacksmith. What time of day is it? It's only one, two o'clock in the afternoon. Why is she sitting here? I don't mean to be rude, but... She's a five in skills. Maybe there's no place for her. Smithy. Because sometimes people suddenly are around and you go, what is this person doing here? And they are um, not working for some reason. Smithy. Oh, that's her. sure we have she has plenty of work to do we'll assume she's just on a break <laughs> I don't want to go too far a lot of times in the middle of the day you just find kids sitting around here this is, this is, oh, this is her daughter. 
Okay, I'll give them benefit of the doubt. They are sitting around talking and she has, her daughter has a problem. I don't know. It's the weekend. Who knows? Um, I'm going to show you the fields that I have here. This is one of the... They're so cute. The little guys are so cute. Uh, scoot over, kid. Now just... Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Your son or daughter, if you have a daughter, will give you little gifts during the day, so talk to them. You want them to be, uh, you know, close to you and have a good relationship. Okay, these are my crappy fields. Why aren't, when are the oats? In spring, okay. So I've planted oats, I've planted flax. We've got carrots planted here, cabbage planted there. And the way you set this up is under management again. Go to your fields and each field, these are all the different crops up here. Let's take the little one here in case I screw it up. Since there's green on all of these, First off, it shows you on the map where the field is that you're doing. And then you open it up and it shows you how big the field is. This is just one little square. I think it was when I was playing around trying to figure out how to do this. And it's green. It's in plant growth right now. But there is a way to change your plant type. And I will not go through with this so it won't change anything but you can do this and you find what you want to plant and if you go into let's try wheat if i saved it when i left oh shoot he didn't ask me if i wanted to save it it is there See, this is the problem. I don't know what that is. It's not telling me what that is. It's a picture, and the only way you can go in and look at it is like this. Change plant type. And that picture are poppies. I don't want poppies. We've got, let's escape and escape, escape. Let's see what's going on. Oh, look at this. That's my son. He's out wandering all over the place. Um, hi, Dad. By the way, you can't choose to be male or female in this game. You're, you're male. Bye-bye. Uh, so he's going to take off. What did we have planted here? Cabbage. Okay. So apparently poppies will go next. That's the one thing that I really do not like about this part of the fields is you're relying on pictures that don't tell you until you get into it and then you can change something accidentally. And, and then the only other way you can tell when, I'll go get a bag here and I'll show you. The only way you can really tell, except through memory, which is not my strong suit, is to get a bag. Oh, there's no bag here. Let's go down to the storage shed. I think there's a bag in here. Yes, there's a bag in here. We're just going to take one. And you have to equip it. So you go here, you equip it, put it in slot one, escape out of here, hit one, and you have it in the lower right hand corner, it shows that you've got the bag equipped. Now, see, if you want to select the type of seed, you have to right click on your mouse. Here's the field, things you can plant in the field. Now, you can, it, if there's a yellow X on it, it says this seed can't be planted this season. But say I wanted to plant it, it also says underneath what says rye, you plant in the autumn to harvest in the spring. 
and the other one oat grain because it takes rye and oats and rye and oats and I think straw to make your um, animal feed which is really important for your animals so this one you plant in spring and harvest in autumn so autumn and spring spring and autumn so you have to have fields going for these two constantly to make sure you have enough for animal feed now flax plant in the spring harvest in the summer carrots you can plant in the spring or winter and if you spring autumn winter summer so having the bag on equipped is the only way you can really tell what's going on as to when to plant unless you're so much better than I am and can just watch it all the time um, you also can make fertilizer oh no I've got the bag on fertilizer to sow in the field so you can help them plant and fertilize this part of the the trees in the orchard I haven't done that yet I want to do a do an orchard they take a much longer time to grow in fact let me look at that while we're here one look here I guess they can be planted at any time there's no specifications okay. so we'll find out down the road okay so I wanted you to see how bad these fields were I mean you can't even see them and they're not very big this is the oats are here. Flax is here and I showed you the others. Okay, we're going to go out here on the map. This, as you can see, is where my village is. If I go this way, you can see all the buildings. It shows the, the houses and the lumber mill and the blacksmith and the food storage and all of that. That's this village and it's kind of ramshackle. Okay, well over here, I have a couple of houses and some buildings and um, somebody with a quest. But let me show you what I've done. Having a village close to an area that is really flat is very important for your fields. Unless you want people to be running, I mean, you can do it, but to me, it's not as organized. I have a couple of houses here. And this is my big field of flax. And I think I've got a couple other little strips here as well. Yeah, this is flax, flax. And are they working on this one? Let's see what's going on. Maybe the field 10 average now. Field. Oh, this is the road. Duh. Okay. See how nice and square this field is compared to the mess that I have in the other area? Well, what I did is I laid roads first to make it nice and even. I laid this road here. From down at that road, I ran it all the way up as far as I could. And I did it, you can see at the very top of the screen, the arrow is on south. I made sure that I stayed south the whole time I ran this road across. Then I did another one, and as you can see, this is west. So I have roads that run north and south, east and west, and in the middle, I put the field in. And you put the field in, you, you have to just start it up here in the corner and you get one stake down and then you move diagonally across your field and drag it and then drop it where you want it to drop. And that's how I ended up with this field. This is the maximum size field that you can make in one 
felt swoop, so I, I pulled it over to this corner. And that made a nice, nice square flat field. And I had a little more room over to the road, so I did two little strips here of additional field. I'm wondering if I can, let me show you, maybe the, no, I'm afraid the road will, as the road goes really wide, I don't think I can turn this section into road, but let's give it a try, let's give it a try. Hitting Q will bring up this menu where you can make tools this is where you start and beginning your building and all that and then there are other things you can make in the buildings that you put up like your smithy and your maintenance shed and workshop all of that so this is for the road let's see if it'll allow okay if it turns uh right. nope well hmm. i don't think it's gonna work yeah, see, it's not green. It's not going to allow me to put a road. Because what I wanted to do was put... Um, cancel. I wanted to turn this into road so you wouldn't have all these bushes growing in here. But it is what it is. Next time I'll know how big a, far, a field can be. And then I can just turn this into other stuff. But anyway, I have flax growing here, here, and here and I have a ton of flax to seed to sell. Always be sure you hang on to your flax seed to plant again, and then um, sell the rest of it, because that's how you're gonna make some, some coin. Now, what I have here are two houses, because I brought over a couple of barn workers, and I need to build another house, because I brought over three. This is another, this is storage shed number two. This is my third storage shed, shed, but it's in better quality. It doesn't, the building doesn't get to the point where it needs to be, it gets damaged and you have to repair it as often when you go up in class on the buildings. Um, but this, everything that is in this storage shed is also in the storage shed back in my other village. And then I have another storage shed up 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 here because this is a mine and I'll go up there myself every once in a while and I'll get copper and tin and and salt and you know that sort of thing and if I put it in the shed you don't have to run it all the way down you can just it just becomes part of your sheds down here somebody and I thought of this idea too but there's somebody that had put a shed over by the main town so you, don't, you can buy more or sell directly from there instead of hauling it back and forth. By the way, be sure every day to wash up. They will get upset with you. The uh, townspeople will say things to you about how you stink or you look terrible, that kind of thing. Uh, no. gonna go okay let's go pick up the quest let's go over here we'll go back to the other side of town what I plan on doing is what I was trying to say is that I'll probably put the village up in here and take out a lot of this the trees down here maybe even put it down in here and I'm going to or maybe put it on the other side of the fields the thing is you want to keep some buildings close to each other the food storage and the tavern you want to close to where the people are the resource farms lumber mill smithy seamstress um, need to be in one spot so that you don't if you're running stuff around because you'll end up doing it yourself you're not running all over the place the buildings are close to each other and it's simple to transfer stuff from one to the other um, Everybody can take things from, that are working, can take things from the main storage rooms, houses, storage buildings, which is what this is, the main storage, where everything is held. Whereas when you go into, let's put my torch up so we can see a little bit here. This is the hard part about streaming when it gets dark. Um, this is a barn. 
and I've put stuff in here specifically for the farmers and the, the uh, barn workers. But if you want something like, you don't want to, you want to hang on to it like it's flaxseed that you want to sell. Don't put it in that storage. Don't put it in the barn. Be sure it's in your personal storage or on you somewhere where they can't get a hold of it because you need to, um, they'll use it. They'll use it. You want to make sure that it's, it's held back. And that's with a lot of different things. Anyway, I think pretty much covered what I wanted to. Oh, another thing, if you're starting the game, there's one thing I wanted to tell you. And the first weapon that you can make, because you're going to need to eat, so you're going to want to go in and hunt for deer and rabbit and that sort of thing. Um, the first tool you can make to hunt with is a spear. There are no bows and arrows on here. There is a quest and you get to meet, and it's one of the very first quests, and you get to meet Samboa, I think his name is, and he's way up here. That's his little shed. He hunts right around in this area. But you can at any time run up there to him, and he is a merchant also, and you can buy a bow and arrows. Now the best bow to get is a recurve bow and iron arrows. And a lot of times you'll find that you can get iron arrows through quests. That'll be something they give back to you for your doing the quest. And iron arrows are the best and a recurve bow is the best. You can start taking down animal like deer, just one shot. If you hit them and hit them right spot, boom, they're down. Um, buffalo. I don't know if I've ever taken a buffalo down in one, maybe not. A bear, I don't think so. Buffalo and bear are the, the hardest ones, but everybody else you can pretty much take them down with one one shot. Um, let's see. You want to go up in, I want to make sure, oh shoot, I've got new technology. Skills are where you put your points in as you earn them. These are the five skills available. And these are the five skills that your people have. See these five skills with these symbols above them, they're all at different different levels. Oh my gosh, a nine. My seamster has gone up to a nine. That's I've never had a nine. I don't even know how high they go. Wow, pretty cool. So um, in your skills, you want to keep increasing the skills that you have by putting in points and every once in a while you'll get you'll see a little like over here there's a little yellow asterisk here and it means you have a point that you can put in and what you're doing is building these skill trees um, and the first one is for extraction which is your lumberjack and your gathering um, hunting also gathering and hunting supplying food farming which are the the people that actually handle the farms and um, the, I believe, just a minute. Yeah, they also are the animal husbandry ones as well. So you want to, if that's, you need more points in that, that's where you'll put them, and, but they come few and far between. I haven't put much in diplomacy. I guess that's where, when you're dealing with the king maybe, Things are better. I don't know. This is survival, which is um, learning to do. Let's see what it says here. Survival activities. That's hunting and that sort of thing. Temperature tolerance. You can eat poison food a little better. <laughs> uh, mushrooms, feathers, and herbs. You can see them in the when you hit down the Alt key. That's an important one because if you're out. And if you hit your alt key, you can see St. John's Ward and mushrooms to go gather if you happen to be out in the middle of the night doing it. Um, so those are important to get your skills up. And the other one is your technology. And this technology goes up. You don't, I don't have points to put in. They don't do that. But your technology goes up with certain things that you'll do. Um, like if you build a building, building, develop this technology, extracting activities and building structures. By building structures, this 
will go up. Um, and you'll have new schemes that you can purchase. This is what is, as you go up, as you can see, I'm right here in, in building. I have been purchasing where I can build a log fence, wooden stool, standing torch. Oh, I can do that now, standing torch. Tells you all that you need because that'll give you light in town at night. Um, I have not purchased the wooden fence, but I did purchase a different fence, the log fence. I think it was a better fence, so I didn't want to waste but my money on the other fence when I want to build log fences that'll protect the town. Um, anyway, that, that's that. And then in um, survival, stone spear, a bow, stone arrow, bird trap, wooden campfire. These are all things that rat trap and yeah, no big deal. A fishing net. I haven't done those yet. I haven't tried them. I've been doing fine with the other uh, recurve bow. To me, that was important to, to, so I didn't have to purchase it from somebody else. I can make recurve bows. It takes one log four linen thread, and three leather to make that bow. And boy, if you don't have flax, you're not going to be able to make linen thread, and linen thread can be pretty expensive. And if you make them, you can sell them, too. So there, it all ties together. This is farming and food storage. These are the barns, the hen house, the pigsty. I only have a hen house purchased the ability to make animal feed. Barn, daub and flour, hen house and pigsty. Those are the only two. The main thing about the pigsty is manure. That's a big deal because buying, um, I mean, manure for making fertilizer. When you've got big fields, you need fertilizer, and it's very expensive to go to town and buy manure. Whereas if you got your pigs, that's what they give you, and it's great. I don't have a goose house yet. I don't have food storage, too. I should look into these. Barn, too, I did make. Now a stable. Ooh, I'm excited because I can get a burrow to help me carry rocks and that kind of stuff. It'll be great. Or ride him. You can also ride him. And of course, these are all the things that you can purchase to make in these different huts. I haven't done much in the sewing hut, just what I wanted to do, which were linen shirts. And the first one I bought was this one because they get up there. These aren't too bad, but you'll end up with some that cost a thousand coin. And at the time, I just didn't want to do that. Now, see, the wool thread is the next thing. You can buy sheep as well, but I'm not at that point yet for a sewing hut, too. Tavern 2, market stall. This is an interesting one. I don't know what this is going to do. Um, by crafting items and cooking, discover new schemes, and learn to construct more advanced production buildings. And I also think that person can sell for you. You can mark things for them to sell for you. But I have that. I'm not that far yet. I don't know. Okay, well, let's go back. And I am going to see if there's anything else I wanted to tell you. Oh, okay, that happens a lot. The torch broke. So now we have to go into inventory. Get another torch. Equip it. I hit the letter F and it brings the torch back up. Uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention. You have the option when you start the game to select food spoilage or not. My food is not spoiling. I wanted to learn all about the rest of the game before I got to some of the more difficult stuff. And that, I think, is going to be one of them where you have to keep food going for everybody. Um, so... But the positive thing about having food that spoils is that you don't have to buy manure in the beginning because spoiled food can be used, it's, it rots and can be used to make fertilizer. I want to make sure I mention that as well. 
Um, so I mentioned about the bow. Don't build in the dark. I got buildings all cattywampus and everything. Don't build in, it, it's up to you. I'm in a real hilly area with these buildings down here and they're all kind of haphazard and it's just tough um, because you'll go think in your head, okay, well, I'm going to put the buildings here that are, you know, certain buildings and then you go to build it and it's so, it's not level enough to build it and then, and there's no way to fix that. So if you're in a leveler area, it works out a little better. Um, I told you about the tip points. Four day seasons. I told you what the good bow and arrows are. Oh, and iron arrows. I haven't been able to mine iron yet, iron ore. So I can't make the really good bow. So I am still purchasing iron arrows and you can get them through quests. Um, I guess that's about it. Oh, there's two types of quests. I guess you do. I'm not sure. You have story quests that do not expire. You have side quests that you pick up. That's what I was going to show you. Pick up a quest. I've got two people here in my town that have quests for me to do. And see, in the uh, directional bar at the top, there are two exclamation points so there must be one in this house <laughs> where's the door here's the door no nope, here's the door let's see if this is it oh yeah oh bear has it they will talk to you if you have a quest going on if they're sleeping they'll get up when you have a quest where you're turning it in or you're taking it other than that they won't get up Oh, I'm not going to get up. I guess if I was finishing a quest, I'd get up. Oh, their daughter's getting older. Another thing, just to tell you, um, if you put a man, you, the buildings, I don't know about the update, I have to check this out, but when I started playing, you had to put in your houses, I thought, okay, there's three beds. I can put um, three guys in there. Nope. Three women. Nope. I could only put a man and a woman in one house. So tried to put a man by himself in a house and a woman by herself in a house. They somehow hook up and they end up in a house together and start having kids. Because as you can see, I have kids. Six, ten, eight, Four, four, two, one, and a baby. I don't even know if I knew about that one. I gotta check and see who's, and see what happens is when they start to have kids, you have a kid that you have another mouth to feed until they're 18. When they're 18, they can be put to work. Otherwise, they're hanging around together or your son or daughter will ask to go hunting with you or whatever. But the worst part of it is you have a mother who's out of work for, until that child's two years old. So she won't be doing anything for two years. So you bring in somebody else, you put her, you know, and hopefully have a spot to put that other person when they come in. And you're growing all the time, so you usually do. But um, I'm fortunate right now, I only have one mother, one. Yeah, everybody else is working. This must be her kid. Oh no, I have two mothers. Oh, Wigbert. What a name, Wigbert. She's a year old. I got another year to go with her. And Otilia, she was just born. Anyway, so that's how this game goes. It gets a little bit it's very challenging. Let me put it that way. I don't want to say anything negative about it. I love the music. I love the, the calmness of it and everything. And it is a lot of fun to play. It's just that uh, there are times I get a little frustrated. But then what's, you know, a good game will keep you a little frustrated. You're learning all the time. Anyway, I um, have this on my YouTube. I will post this on my YouTube. 
uh, channel, which is Madam's Mix. It's Madam's with an apostrophe S space Mix, M-I-X. I think it's also listed on my uh, Twitch main page. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, so every video I've done is there, mostly Elder Scrolls Online, but I have put up several for Medieval Dynasty. And we've got another game that I think I'm going to start playing uh, soon, so we'll see how that goes as well. But if you have any questions, put it in the comments um, on YouTube or join me when I stream. I stream usually Friday night, Saturday night, and then twice on Sunday. Fr this is all Elder Scrolls. This is always every week. We have um, a run with the Guild Master for Friday night where we do... We'll have specific things. We'll go for sky shards one time. We'll, we'll do world bosses, that sort of thing. Uh, Saturday night, our sister guild, Celestial Legacy, um, does a world boss run that we always go with them. So I stream that because it's a lot of fun. We are, ever since the COVID came in and we were all shut down, we ended up with some great friends in the game. So um, we've got some real jokesters too. So usually it's a lot of fun. And those are all up as well. And then Sunday, we do trials, which if you're a WoW person, that's the raid, we, which is part of the hardest content in the game. And we're learning trials, and I put those up as well, our, our wins and our losses, and show what we screwed up on. And they usually, we usually, in fact, I think on all of them, have somebody that knows the trial and explains what needs to be done. And it's not like your end gamers that go out there and... Um, you don't know what they're doing and you're trying to, you don't get real good explanation. They just say, they're very quiet and they just go through the trial and like, well, what did that, what was that? What did they do? We go over it and you see all of our faux pas and just sometimes it's a mess. We just finished last Sunday, we did Cloud Rest Plus Three. It was so much fun. It, we, know, we knew Cloud Rest trial pretty well on normal. So we wanted to take it up a step and it was a lot of fun with all the bosses that are in the, if you know Elder Scrolls at all, um, they put all the bosses into the, with the final boss and a lot going on, very confusing, but we did it. And it was, it took us uh, a little bit of time, but it was great. Um, and then on Sunday, oh, that is Sunday, Sunday afternoon, I do a trial and then we have a run in Cyrodiil, which is the PVP area. Um, and we run, we are not PVP players. We are getting better, We're, and that's not our main focus. We're a very social guild. Um, and we will, <laughs> we run in Cyrodiil just to get alliance points. And um, we just run and do farms, take out farms, uh, mines, and uh, Mines, mines, and I can't remember the third reason. Oh, lumber mills, and take them out, and you get alliance points. And with alliance points, you can buy, purchase, you can purchase special types of armor and stuff in Cyrodiil. So anyway, that's a lot of fun, and that's on Sunday evenings. And then randomly, like today, I uh, will do more of an instructional kind of uh, video, but it's all on YouTube. So if anybody wants to take a look, I'm no professional streamer by any means. And sometimes that's what it is like because it's, it's just a beginning type of learning of different games. But I hope you enjoy. And if you do, please give me a follow and uh, subscribe on YouTube. And I will take off. Have a good day. Bye-bye.